Hello, I was born and raised in Germany, which makes me a German. And today I'm going to react to this uh, Geography Now channel about uh, Germany. Maybe I learned something new here. So here we go. Oh, and uh, please like their video and subscribe to their channel because they did all the work here. I'm just reacting. And if you can spare two likes, I'd be delighted to receive a like as well. So here we go. Go like, subscribe, and go. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. I've gotten diarrhea from gummy bears once because uh, some of them use uh, some sweeteners instead of sugar or whatever, and that sweetener can give you diarrhea. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. Want a gummy bear? <laughs> that was a good joke. Uh, yeah, uh, stereotypes. Um, the Lederhosen especially. Uh, there's only a small percentage of Germans that actually wears Lederhosen. And it comes from uh, the southern state of Bavaria. And the majority of Germans has never even touched them in their whole lives. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Mm -hmm. Level one, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg, yeah. with small coasts on the North and Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Because lower as in elevation. Because in, in Saxony there's mountains and stuff and Lower Saxony lies at the coast. So it's lower. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbahn Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Konstanz is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to How do they come up with these borders? And so you could basically live in one house and you s take two steps and you're in another country. Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Yeah. Mecklenburg-Vorpommern will be different from Saarland. Yeah, especially the dialects. Uh, like the southern dialects from Bavaria, for example, it's, it's very hard to understand them when they speak their local dialect. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller... That looks so chaotic. All right, okay. Wow. Separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up. And finally, German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spread. Right. Um, I've heard that in Namibia, in this uh, southern African country, uh, German is either uh, still an, uh, a, na a national language, an official language, or there's a significant people that speak, a significant amount of people that speak it. And also when I look at the map of China there, uh, I've lived in China for quite a while, and yeah, the, the city of Qingdao, Qingdao, when, when I lived there, they always said like, ah, oh, the, the Germans in Qingdao, they, they built the, the water pipes under the streets and they are still usable to this day. So they would say like, yeah, German quality is really good. 
spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land. Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East it's very impressive how he can put the German history in like such a such a short time and I would say many Germans do not know the history of Germany before the Second World War because in school most things we learn are about um, Hitler and uh, the Second World War and anything before that is not mentioned that much but I also was a terrible student so maybe it was just me, I don't know. Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well. Yeah, I remember when I, I didn't really go to East Germany at all when I, when I grew up in Germany, but uh, in the, a couple of years ago, I went to East Germany and I was surprised in the, in the building style. Also normal houses, it, it just looks different from the West off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the blocky soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions in fact the city of berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of west germany only accessible by train and highway you can even see from a satellite image the divide east berlin still uses the yellowish tinted salt yeah because uh, another german german mentality is like uh, if we can still use it why change it uh, it still works, so why put all the effort and money in changing? Um, maybe this is also why the houses still stand, because yeah, they're still usable, they're still houses. Might as well just use them. For vapor light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, yeah. Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Yeah, whenever I fly back to Germany, uh, it's Frankfurt. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world. The yeah, churches in Germany are really beautiful. They're, they're worth visiting, especially the, the Cologne Cathedral. Very impressive building. The Berlin Victory Column and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one yeah. probably being Neuschwanstein. The yeah, there is. Uh, you, you can book a river tour and along that river you can see a lot of castles. That is quite impressive. I know I've done it myself. Should. Concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, yeah. more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. You can go as fast as you want, as, as long as the traffic allows it. Yeah, I've, I've, I've tried like 180 was like the maximum I've tried because my car couldn't do more. Or I wasn't like feeling safe anymore. And I saw and I saw this guy on the on the left lane just probably going like 250 to 300. I don't know. It's uh, a bit crazy to me, but yeah. If, if and and we have um, I've heard there are many uh, autobahn tourists, uh, especially people from Japan. As much as I, uh, as far as I know, they they rent a really nice car and then just go really fast on the autobahn. There's no speed limit, and it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. Yes, like more than 60% is, uh, there's no speed limit. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you yeah. move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north. Yeah, the north uh, doesn't impress me personally very much because it's just really gray and trist and the landscape isn't isn't that attractive and it's uh, cold. It's just really cold there. The wind, the wind is just so icy. That starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything wow. just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by- Yeah, South Germany, when it comes to nature, it's insanely beautiful. We have very nice vast forests and mountains and yeah. Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spray, mm -hmm. Elbe, Wesse, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland. And 
After a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Well, that's why we we go. We also like our bread. Uh, bread is the staple food in Germany, so we need a lot of wheat for it. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the North Flat Plains mm -hmm. and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley. I have never heard of tornadoes in Germany. I could be wrong here, but I have never heard of a tornado in Germany. Due to its position sandwiched between the Arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country. What? How come I've never heard of it? Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absolutely freaking lutely <laughs> love their bread. There are <laughs> over do. 300 different kinds of... Uh, yeah. Our, our word for dinner actually is Abendbrot, which means evening bread. So even in our traditional word for dinner, we have the word bread. Uh, and nowadays we also say Abendessen, which, mean, which means uh, evening food or evening meal. But yeah, we like to eat bread with pretty much everything. You have stew, you eat it with bread. Uh, in the morning you have bread with butter and cheese and uh, whatever you want on it of bread in the country more types than any other country in the world and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brochen mm -hmm. of bread Ast du gluten free nein <laughs> germans are heavy meat eaters specifically in pork they yeah. basically know every possible way to cook a pig over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside ah schnitzel good that this comes up right now schnitzel is delicious if you've never had schnitzel I really recommend you eating it. We have um, a lot of varieties. And the one shown here with, with the mushroom cream sauce is about the best. It's called Jäger Schnitzel, which translates to Hunter's Schnitzel. And I definitely recommend you try this one day. Try to find like a local German restaurant or whatever and try the Jäger Schnitzel. It's delicious. Schnitzels, Rouladen, Sauerbraten, Schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic. Yeah, this is also partially the reason why my channel is called The Untypical German, because I've never ever tasted beer in my entire life. I never tried alcohol in any, any single form. And I just don't know what it tastes like. And oftentimes people tell me, like on my travels, Ah, oh, you Germans, you make the best beer. I'm like... I take your word for it, I don't know. Public, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which by the way follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The wow. oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for. Yeah, that is very true. Um, I've. I know quite a few wealthy people in Germany and they still drive eco-friendly cars that don't require much gas. And I see tons of solar panels on roofs. When you, when you drive through Germany, you, you see a lot of them for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the... That looks like the Black Forest. And Black Forest in Southwest Germany is, first of all, it's insanely beautiful. Uh, and this is where the famous Black Forest cake comes from. And to my knowledge, the real black forest cake has cherries in it because cherries in that region are quite good. And if you ever eat a black forest cake without cherries, then it's not a real black forest cake. The southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the black forest yeah, or yeah. the Schwarzwald oh, in Baden-Württemberg. So Deer, bears, boar. I'm quite certain that we do not have bears in Germany. No bears. Or foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Yeah. Companies we've all heard of, like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, Bosch, Adidas, Puma! Ad <laughs> I like both of them. 
Right now I'm wearing Adidas pants, but I also have uh, Puma pants. I like both of them a lot. Adidas Puma! Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Hey. Level three. The German people. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now Maybe uh, because I've lived abroad for nearly half my life, so I do this. Yeah. If the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past. <laughs> it's so true. That is, <laughs> that, is, that is a very accurate way to say it every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most mm -hmm. populated in the EU, second most in Europe after... Yes, and it should also be noted that it has the... Uh, German is the language of the most native speakers in Europe. There are more native German speakers than native English speakers and other, and other languages. ...to Russia and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, yep. Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany yep. is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the Union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Oh yeah, there's so many foreigners in Germany. Destination. Germany experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted that is, yeah. a mostly government subsidized university. Problem is German is really hard to learn. Uh, I'm an English teacher and I also started teaching German and since I started teaching German, I've realized how easy English is. Universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get... Yeah, uh, there are, I think, over 30 dialects or whatever in Germany. And some of them are really, really hard to understand, especially the southern Bavaria. Bavarian German is very hard to understand. Uh, on my travels, I met a guy from Bavaria, and f for two days we hung out, but uh, I had to tell him all the time, can you please speak high German? This Bavarian is really, really hard to, to, to understand. By most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is yeah. the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, mm. and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, yeah, I'm from between North Germany and the Rhineland, like west between these uh, dark blue and is it purple or yeah, purple and light blue, um, be, be, like on that line from there. And Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, yeah. more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Yeah, that sounds about right, yeah. But again, North Germany... Ah, whatever. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. Yes. And then you have Bavaria, which is oh, where God. the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, yep. half-timber, beer houses, and cuckoo. As I said before, like, most Germans, the vast majority, has probably never even touched Lederhosen. Clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys Pretty with guns much. and horses. Pretty Speaking much. of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about mm. themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and... Okay, I wasn't aware of these stereotypes, but stereotypes do come from somewhere, so maybe it has some ground there. And so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen. But in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss. Although Auf Wiedersehen and Tschüss 
you can both use them in any situation, it's fine. And in Rhineland, you might say, I use. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischer, Ticketierungs, Überwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. Rindfleisch, Etikettierungs, Überwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. Yeah, because German grammar, it allows us to put an infinite amount of nouns together and create a compound word. And gr growing up with German as a native language, your brain is kind of wired of uh, dissecting this word into these smaller words. For example, snow, flake becomes snowflake. Uh, so for us, it's like, it's very easy to, to read these words because our brain already has them separated. It's, <coughs> it's because many words are mehrdeutig or... There's a spelling error, mehrdeutig. There should be an E after the D, mehrdeutig. Ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Yeah, there's quite a quite a number of German words that it's hard to have a direct English translation for. Thing like my favorite word, backpfeifen. Okay, there's a spelling error again. A backpfeifen Gesicht. Spell a bit wrong. Yeah, <laughs> a face you just want to slap. Gesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have. Yeah, yeah, we, we do use this a, f a fair amount, but uh, if your keyboard doesn't support this letter, S set, then you can just type double S and it's perfectly fine. Tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's... Yeah, it's very true. Like in Germany, we, we don't watch English movies. We watch them in German or even a TV series from, from the US. It's all in German. Here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians. Split yeah, I've, I've yet to meet uh, Germans that are Christians or at least like active practicing Christians. It's kind of getting lost, I think. Between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge yeah. Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early. Another spelling error, Viet. Schaftswunder. Uh, there's no E. W I R T would be right. The 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Yeah. Gymnasium geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities, Realschule, a middle ground type of school, and Hauptschule, a mm. school that is geared towards... Yeah, Hauptschule is, was always a bit frowned upon because that's where a lot of people with troubled backgrounds go, and they were always said to not be very uh, safe, like lots of um, fightings and so on going on there. That was kind of the, the stereotypical Hauptschule. Helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in oh, the yeah. EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through Good. music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras, mostly mm. supported by public money. And artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a... Good to know. A special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of the Gangenheitsbeb... Vergangenheitsbewältigung, like getting over the past. Yeah, uh, in school we are pretty much taught like how bad things were, and obviously they were, uh, and that it can never happen again and whatever, and that we need to now uh, make sure Germany does things right. But also the, the new generation is kind of sick of all the Nazi thing, and we, we, we learn it 
like from from beginning to back and backwards and everything in school and hearing about it when we go abroad or whatever and people mention nazis it's kind of kind of annoying to to germans at this point because yeah it it is like two generations ago we were born in the 80s 90s or whatever and it kind of has not much to do with us anymore totally butchered that which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride and oh yeah like you you probably won't meet a german that has something good to say about germany including myself it's kind of weird like i always think like eh, if you if you don't go to germany you haven't missed anything um yeah it, it is a great country it is a great country to live in German language is beautiful, huh? Probably don't believe that, but it is actually. And culture and everything, it is actually a really, really nice country. But for some reason, Germans, either we are taught to not love our country or we're just, we, we, we don't have it in us. I don't know. And unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag. Yeah, th that is the interesting thing. For example, there, there, there is someone from another country living in Germany and they, they raise their flag in their backyard. It's like, yeah, fine. He likes his country. But if a German does that, they're like, he's a Nazi. It's kind of interesting. When a German raises a German flag in Germany, he's considered a Nazi. Kind of weird how that is flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting it's weird but it's kind of how things are yeah. you monster <laughs> exactly that's exactly what it's like they've made great strides to move on from the past nazi flags and mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in germany yeah a funny thing about the, the, the nazi flag the, the swastika when i went to asia and i saw this symbol like a lot on these temples yeah then i learned it's actually a buddhist symbol and blah 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 but they hijacked it Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volksverhetzung, which basically, Volksverhetzung. basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, mm. Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the US and became an American. So what? He is from Germany. Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Shoemaker, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <coughs> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country. I think we got overtaken by what is Singapore, so. But yeah, it's still a very, very good passport to hold, and uh, I make use of it traveling in the world just beating sweden therefore you can kind of conclude that germany kind of knows how to relate to people let's find out how in the final round level four <laughs> germany knows how to make friends they have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls the funny thing about the friend aspect is i find uh, because i travel a lot and i've met a lot of germans abroad and i find germans are very nice and warm to other foreigners or the local people then, respectively. But for some reason, Germans tend to be not very friendly with each other. It's very bizarre when I think about it, because when I meet other Germans, it's more often than not that I like, introduce myself. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm blah, 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 where are you from? Is it from Germany? Oh, that's cool. I'm from Germany, too. And then it's like some weird feeling of distance. Huh? and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations, and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Ah, it is. Okay, so I was right. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in mm. Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War, and after reunification, they were like, woohoo, even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Mm. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the... True, there are a lot of uh, Koreans living in Germany. And Vietnamese. Chances are, if you see an uh, like an, an East Asian looking person in Germany, they most likely are from either Korea or Vietnam. 
Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The U.S. is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and yeah. after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. True, like a lot of Americans that I meet uh, when I when we talk about heritage and everything, then many people tell me, oh, they're their grandfathers or their great grandfathers from Germany or whatever. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey yeah. is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. <laughs> the thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina in which by deep... To be honest, like, it is kind of impressive, yeah, how Germany, after the Second World War, destroyed themselves, destroyed many other countries, and caused so much suffering, uh, rebuilt itself, and made so many friends right after, and holds one of the strongest passports, uh, passports, passports in the world. It's kind of impressive, if you think about it default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France though is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yeah. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Same yeah, and when I travel to certain countries, and as I say I'm from Germany, the reaction is always very positive they're like oh you're from germany cool nice like they're this yeah they're, there's something about it i don't i don't know what it is other people other countries seem to like germany a lot but germans don't like germany we are we are a bit weird stay tuned another african state germany has ties to ghana is coming up next ah, okay yeah wow the, this was a very informative video um and there's only one mistake i could see in there that is bears I'm quite sure that we do not have bears in Germany. Other than that, yeah, very well done video. So please go to their channel, subscribe and like if you haven't. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye bye.